Hello friends, uh, subscribers and random people on the internet that I've had the pleasure of meeting over the past few days both on X and uh, YouTube. I've met a lot of people from Ireland because my recent video output on this YouTube channel has uh, covered a lot of stuff to do with Ireland, both of those in the pro-Israel camp, including some old acquaintances, um, as well as those very much not in the pro-Israel camp. So I've uh, had quite a diversity of interactions on these uh, social media platforms uh, recently. This is Daniel Rosal. This YouTube channel is Daniel Rosal Jerusalem and Israel Unpacked. And usually I'm trying always to delve into socioeconomic issues and occasionally find up these uh, rare online gems like the guy in Tel Aviv who has uh, established the website with the world's largest gallery of manhole covers ever documented. I feel like if any video has, I've struggled uh, with the sexual innuendo going in, in the back of my head, the manhole cover video probably uh, takes the biscuit but uh, that if you're interested in uh, weird and wonderful things that don't have to do with the current war check out that video on my youtube channel it's a pretty cool project um so i wanted today to show you show for those interested i'm going to send this maybe to some of my uh, pro israel or israel sympathetic family members abroad um some of the news sources that i've been using to keep track of the news regarding this conflict as it evolves. We are going into day 30. We're on day 30 today. So tomorrow uh, we're going into the second month of this conflict, depending on how you count your months. You could argue that, you know, there's 31 days, but uh, tomorrow is really, I think, month two of the Israel-Gaza war. Now, I personally calling it the Israel-Gaza war, I've decided for the moment because Israel is not just fighting Hamas. So I think calling it the Israel-Hamas war is misleading. Israel is uh, fighting also the Palestinian Islamic Jihad in the Gaza Strip. And although toppling Hamas is its key operational objective, it's really trying to root out uh, the terrorist organizations in Gaza intent on its destruction. Of course, there's also uh, skirmishes going on with Lebanon and Hezbollah on the northern border. And we always have the potential that this conflict is going to uh, open up into something bigger. And then at that point, people who are very uh, pedantic about uh, naming naming a nomenclature like myself will have to wonder is it is it fair to call this an Israel Hamas war Israel Arab war if uh, not all Arab states are participating and indeed some Arab states are actually uh, tacitly supporting Israel that's a matter open for open for debate I think but uh, all that can be really said at the moment is that Israel is continuing with its ground operation in the Gaza Strip encircling uh, Gaza City. Um, doing some maneuvers intended to facilitate the uh, the evacuation of people stuck in Gaza. And uh, really, it's little morsels of information, I think, coming through. And I want to talk about those morsels of information in today's video. Now, just to say at the very outset, uh, there is uh, no way here that, uh, you know, people, people are going to... If you're on the different side of the political spectrum, you're on the pro-Palestinian side, you're not going to like my choice of new sources one little bit. Uh, so... You know, my uh, th these are the ones that align with what I regard as trustworthy news and my ideological uh, sort of preferences in this conflict. If you're on the opposing side, so to speak, you might you might find these uh, useless, but you might also want to get those that I regard as kind of uh, at least balanced or uh, or showing the uh, the pro-Israel narrative. So let us uh, jump in straight away without any further ado. So we're going to cover. Um, I'm going to cover. I should say both. Uh, English language and Hebrew language news sources uh, because I use a mixture of both. Obviously, if you don't uh, speak Hebrew, you can't read Hebrew, you're going to find the Israeli ones harder to access, but I would say actually not impossible. And I'll talk about that uh, when we go into them. So here's just kind of uh, in English news sources. The one I just kind of keep an eye on during the day is the Times of Israel live blog. Um, there's a few of the Times of Israel journalists contributing to this, including... Uh, Manny Fabian, who uh, I really think does tremendous reporting, uh, but the, it's a it's a team of them, and uh, this just kind of keeps rolling throughout the day. What I like about it is that you might think as a live blog, it's going to be kind of like a Twitter feed every few minutes, and it's not that. They they tend to post out something every hour or two, and they tend to you know put out the more significant updates in short format. So I think. Um, it's not too overwhelming and you, you kind of get the picture of the big updates as they come in uh, throughout the day, like the Ram party demands resignation of MK for casting doubt on the massacres. IDF says troops and covers, military equipment and whatnot. And uh, it just kind of keeps going and going and going. I'm just going to move the camera a little bit 
so I can actually see the screen as I'm talking about it. So that's uh, the Times of Israel uh, live blog. And they do have a podcast as well um, that uh, people do find useful and it's popular. Uh, but I'm not such a podcast guy myself, so I don't listen to it. But yeah, it's uh, it's there. Here's a real gem I've discovered. I mean, there's just such an overwhelming amount of news uh, coming from all directions at the moment. And, you know, I've been trying to, because as I mentioned, we're getting into the second month of the war as the month has gone on i've been trying to just kind of optimize my conflict because staying glued to the news 24 hours a day just is not sustainable wherever you are and uh, i put out a request recently on social media saying if anyone knows of just really really short punchy updates uh one update a day that just gives you the essential stuff that you really don't want to miss and a lot of people recommended this initiative that I really, really think is a great website. It's called Israel AM and the website is IsraelAM.com. I'll put a link in the description, not that that's too hard to remember. Uh, but these guys send out uh, one uh, short email three times a week. And I think the most useful thing, my kind of perspective on news, is that right now news aggregation is probably the most useful skill when you're looking for a new source and Israel AM is an example of what I would call an aggregator. They're getting news in Hebrew, they're getting it in Arabic, uh, they're getting it in English and they're kind of putting it together into your daily briefing. I just want to say as well for those, uh, one thing I have observed that may be completely obvious, but I said I'd throw it out there nevertheless, is that the, the source languages in this conflict are Arabic and Hebrew. The first reports are going to be coming out in Arabic and Hebrew. Um, and if you're looking for the very best latest information, I find you'll generally get a higher quality of information um, by watching the news or following the news in those languages because there's always this translation delay. And of course, it's important to note as well, I'm going to do a video on this topic at some point, probably sooner rather than later, that Israel does have a military censor, which um, all the Israeli newspapers have to work kind of hand in hand with. And the military censor's job is to suppress information that could pass on uh, sort of useful information to Israel's enemies. So that's another reason why a friend of mine has pointed out that sometimes you'd actually find the foreign press um, totally contrary to what I said. Now and again, you will see the foreign press coming out with something before the Israeli news, but usually it works the other way around. So I recommend IsraelAM.com. I find it very good. Let's let's now switch languages into Hebrew and um so the ones that I kind of uh, follow a lot is uh, Dover Tzahal, which is the Hebrew for the Israeli uh, spokesperson. Now, this guy comes on, if you just filter in kind of last week in YouTube, you will start to get their updates. And I think I probably need to um, improve the spelling a little bit, Dover Tzahal. Yeah, this guy. Um, so Ed Khone Tzahal is a YouTube channel uh, that I'm actually not sure I'm subscribed to. Um, the problem is that they kind of have their information spread out over a bunch of channels. The IDF is a little bit disorganized, um, but this is a this is a channel that you can follow. Ed Khone Tzahal, um, that I've been watching apparently without subscribing. Uh, this is uh, the IDF uh, spokesperson guy, and he comes on Israeli news every day and gives kind of again punchy updates. Uh, you can see this is the update for the fourth of November, and it's a five minute video it's in hebrew and this this um broadcast this guy speaking the idf spokesperson will get picked up will be played as it's released on israeli news every night uh but you can also watch it as video on demand as such vod via youtube and uh, he does shavua tov anachu betchilato shel shavua hamishi la milchama lochamei tzal emiku et alech uh, so that that's uh, this is a guy and he does do these English briefings as well so if you follow the IDF on Twitter IDF the official Twitter channel they have a telegram channel as well um, and uh, you can get all these updates through that source also so that's one I am Ed Khone Tzahal also Arus Arba Esrei Akshav Arba which is the sort of more right-wing channel their YouTube channel has been sharing his updates for days for reasons that are beyond me, the, neither the English nor the Hebrew IDF channel has been uh, uploading these videos. So they're coming from, I think, Ed Khone Tzahal is a third party source and as well as a TV station. So uh, while that situation remains, you may uh, want to subscribe to this channel or subscribe to Akshav Arbaasre, which is a, 
Arutz Arbazre, which is a Channel 14, one of the Israeli TV stations, more right-wing stations, and you'll be able to get his updates as well. All right. Um, in terms of Israeli TV television, so I've done a video recently about the what I call the big four Israeli TV stations. Those are channels 11, 12, 13, and 14. 11 is Khan, the Israeli state broadcaster. 12 is Kesha. 13 is uh, Reshed, I believe. People can correct me if I got that wrong. Not so much difference between 12 and 13 in terms of their ideological slant. And then 14, which is Akshav Arbaasri, which is kind of more right wing uh, associated with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. So basically, the one I watch the most by far is Khan Echadisre. And that's because it's Israel's national uh, broadcaster. And they put up the nightly news as it comes out on uh, they have a live feed, which is what you're looking at me watching currently. Um, I believe this can only be accessed in Israel, although you can probably, if you have a VPN, access it, I would imagine, without much difficulty through an Israeli VPN endpoint. Um, and they have a bunch of YouTube channels also. Um, so the nightly news gets put out on, if I can find it here, uh, can, I'm going to just do my YouTube here, Can Echadisre, search for this in YouTube. And this is it, Can Echadisre, Tagida Shudo Israeli. This is our main YouTube channel. Click into videos um, and you can find uh, video content uh, coming out from then like this live stream of the um, they're uh, talking about the fallen soldiers here. So this is a live this is the live stream of their news coverage. Um, they have a few different uh, YouTube channels. It's worth pointing out. Uh, so there's Khan Khadashot, this one here, which is Khan 11 News. And this is where they put up their news broadcasts. Um, so you can see Chadashot HaShabbat. So this is the uh, and this is a two-hour video. So this is a full news broadcast. I have to say, love their intro. So this is the full news broadcast starting from the top. It's a two-hour reel, and uh, you can uh, get that there on the on YouTube. Um, okay, so we looked at TV, we looked at uh, the newsletter, we looked at Times of Israel, and finally, I want to talk about Telegram. So Telegram, you know, there is a lot of uh, very. Here's why Telegram Telegram has become extremely important in uh, in this conflict. It's taken on an outside role. I think the official Telegram channels of the uh, various terrorist organizations, including the Hamas channels, have grown something like. Uh, you know, three or four fold since the conflict broke out. Now, finding Telegram channels is a little bit tricky because obviously uh, Telegram kind of kind of succeed or kind of does anonymous chat the best. So you can see the uh, Telegram channels that I'm subscribed to are uh, are pretty diverse. There are a few of these Telegram channels that are sharing the uh, uncensored videos from the uh, October seventh massacre, which are extremely graphic and disturbing in nature. And, uh, you know, um, I'm in these channels because to me, it's important to see them. A lot of people don't have the stomach for it. Um, and there's even worse videos than making it onto these Telegram channels. But there are a few ones called like Uncensored South First Responders. And uh, these are important because the videos that they include are so graphic that they will be taken down off YouTube and uh, Twitter and all these ones. So they're kind of being stashed over on telegram at the moment so if you want to see the full grizzly reality what happened you can uh you can uh, look at those channels here is um abu ali express i've talked about this in a separate video um and what abu ali express does the website is abu ali express.com and you can click off from that into their telegram channel um and it's very very active and basically abu ali express is an israeli guy and this is actually the most popular telegram channel in in israel and he aggregates information as it comes in from everywhere from the hebrew social media the arabic social media the arabic telegram channels um and the reason by the way that a lot of these arabic sources are on telegram like gaza now bin jabil is they tend to share such horrible content that they will be kicked off the more conventional uh channels but if you go to abu aliexpress um you will get a lot of uh, video content coming from sources um, directly, uh, sources that the channel maintains in Gaza, um, as well as monitoring, as I mentioned, the Arabic news. 
Um, there's also Israeli Israel Today has a Telegram channel, Gaza Now, and I'm I, I'm looking at sort of the source slash extreme content coming out of both sides here. Gaza Now is a very uh, is an, a Hamas associated uh, mouthpiece uh, style channel. Uh, Bint Jabil is a um, I'm not sure if it's a Hezbollah mouthpiece or just a uh, Lebanese channel. It probably is a mouthpiece. Kuz News Network um, is uh, is very very pro Palestinian. It's a Palestinian uh, channel in East Jerusalem, and uh, Gaza now in English. Um, you have um, that uh, channel again showing really shocking stuff. So people will say you're not you're only if you're only looking at one side of the of the conflict i see the all the graphic stuff coming out from all the sides all the time it doesn't really inform my perspective that israel needs to do this military maneuver and that the uh human collateral on the palestinian side is tragic because you can't not look at these images of uh you know babies uh being pulled out of rubble and not feel horrible for it it is terrible um but uh i don't see any other way besides a military operation that israel is going to go into the incredibly uh, densely populated Gaza Strip. Jewish breaking news is useful as well. And uh, I even have here um, the uh, uh, Sarayat al-Quds, uh, which is the uh, Palestinian uh, Hamas um, Islamic Brigade. So you really on Telegram, you can find stuff that is ranging from, you know, your conventional news sources Chadashot, uh, FS, uh, FS Arba, FS Arba, 0404 News is, um, is uh, quite good, is one of the break, kind of the breaking Israel news sources. And this, this one from El Mayadeen in, in Arabic is, uh, El Mayadeen is a Hezbollah mouthpiece. And again, you'll frequently see reports emanating in these channels. Uh, you can just see how busy my telegram is. There's just constant updates. I mentioned before, uh, that translating into, um, if you you can actually translate these uh, pretty easily in Telegram if you turn on the translate function. In order to do that, you need to dig around in the settings a little bit. Um, but it's settings language. I'm on the desktop Telegram, and this exists in the um, in the English one as well. And you need to go settings language show translate button, and then interface language English. Now, when I right click on any of these Telegram posts, I'm able to translate them just like that. Uh, into English. That is uh, pretty much it in terms of the new sources I'm using at the moment. Uh, this is sort of a work in progress and if I uh, make some more changes or modifications I will put them up. Thank you guys very much for uh, watching this video and if you have other new sources to recommend please do consider leaving them in a comment. Thanks for watching.